Welcome to another month. We're in the month of July, day one out of 21 days. About to get started on another great fasting in the month of June. Sometimes I recorded, sometimes I just went ahead and just still did the exercise, the whole setup, exercising, got to go to work, all that. Sometimes, hey, I just want to get through the workout. So, the trend of exercise is there. Just keep at your pace on the day to day. May, of course, was had an emergency, had to leave town, etc. All right. April was a good month. April was a good month. March was a good month. All right. Check out that content. The videos that I post on here, the exercise are a little bit different. I do my best to explain the exercise in the beginning and I'm working out on my own pace. Hopefully you are too. I look forward to upgrading where, you know, there's a countdown, there's a number count of what's the next exercise. But I do my best to share the reps in the beginning so you can have like at least a good idea what you're gonna get yourself into. Okay. Uh, in the month of July, we're going to be promoting, pushing, or anytime you watch this video also, anytime you watch this video, this fasting, we're going to be pushing self-love, okay? Uh, if there's a situation that you could be able to Google my name, Alex Blucher, scroll down a little bit on your phone or on your desktop, and you'll be able to see the whole self-love, lots of videos on self-love. Okay, it's uh, Alexander, no, actually it's Alex Blucher, Google search, scroll down and then you see uh, I am Alexander Blucher, self love, I am Alexander Blucher, right? So I was scrolling through the thousands of videos I had and I, I came across one, that's the one that's going to be shared on today's exercise, the background audio, um, which is a lunch if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Angela Ray, the title is Young, Gifted, and Broke Student Debt Crisis, okay? So it's just going to be talking about this, the whole people are going to um, college and they're spending a lot of money, or not spending a lot of money, but they're signing their name to a loan that is almost they wish they didn't sign at all. So uh, it's more of giving yourself the heads up. If you already in college, if you already took out a loan, no, don't you know? No hard feelings. It's just more of the heads up. Share the experience to others that are coming along that path. I did not complete a four-year college. I took the life of hard knocks, of whatever that means. You know, <laughs> learning life. So I'm here today sharing my exercise. I'm thinking before I speak, so it's like, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with it, but at the end of the day, I do not have the typical 50,000, 60,000, 80,000 student loan debt going on, okay? So July, we're going to be going, going over self-love. Uh, June was Immortal Minds. May was also Immortal Minds. Uh, April was Shahzad Ali, and March was um rodriguez joseph rodriguez check out those youtube videos i do leave a link in the description i do my best to leave a link in the description where if the exercise is not for you today check out the youtube videos so at least you could be able to open open in a part of your brain that didn't know was there with this access of information okay uh these are some of the tools not all, but there's some tools I listen to on these YouTube videos I use a part of my life just to keep my mind level-minded where one day I'll be looking at my backyard from a mansion just throwing something out there, you know. One day I have my dream car. I don't have it now, it's okay, but working towards all that. Alright, so um, let's get into the workout. That was a long intro. That was a July 1st intro. I have my intros for each month. 
I think the background is pretty good right now, but early was fireworks and loud music. Excuse whatever you hear in the background, you know, but we're about to get started on the exercise. All right, so today's exercise is the single leg. We're going up for the month of uh, June. We did 10, we're going up to 20. So the single leg, we're doing uh, 20 uh, on each leg. The, the single leg um, lunges, sorry. And then after that, we're doing uh, 20 squats. Last month was one minute, the deep squat. This month, we're in this testing, we're doing the two minute, two minute deep squat, Asian deep squat, okay? I got my piece of, piece of wood right here. So I could be able just to use that to balance. I did it without the wood before. I felt like I had to find my balance. So I had this. I was doing a deep squat on this. This is very helpful. I'm doing on a, a thinner layer. Increasing to a plank. We did one minute plank in June. We're increasing it to two minute planks. Okay. If you cannot do a two minute plank, please do it at your own pace. Start off at 10 seconds. You can start off at 20 seconds. You'll know what your stomach area, your core area could be able to handle, okay? If you start shaking, if you're shaking, shivering, whatever, just be able to give it like three seconds and just stop, okay? The idea of doing a plank is to hold that position real nice and tight and the muscles is doing this thing. The core muscles is doing this thing, okay? Um, we're doing a side plank, 45 seconds on each side, times two. So that's gonna be a burn. Hopefully I could be able to get through that. That's gonna be a serious burn. Uh, upper body, we're doing the curl with the bricks. Uh, 20. We're doing a rip right. Uh, where we hold it for seven seconds and we're doing the rip or the rep seven times and the countdown sequence down and we're doing the raises the actually I think I want to turn the raises oh, I keep it we'll do the raises we we'll do the 20 uh, God woman with August uh, we we'll switch it up all right so don't need to go through all that again you know you heard the exercise just a disclaimer i'm not a fitness coach certified fitness coach this is all upon my experience uh self body worked out um used to play football back in my days run track you know so uh, that's my disclaimer all right so please my important thing to you don't strain a muscle okay if you feel any type of pull Please stop the exercise. It means a lot. All right. With that being said, we're about to get started. Uh, and listening to in the background, Angeli, Angela Ray, Young, Gifted, and Broke, Student Debt Crisis. Have you ever heard the elders say money doesn't grow on trees? Well, I thought it did. I was a private school kid with a brand new car, a pocket full of credit cards, and a life filled with privilege. My daddy called it well off. And when I began school at the University of Washington, my college tuition was paid out of pocket. My parents' pocket, that is. Then my father's company fell on hard times. He had to shut his doors, declare bankruptcy, and just like that, my college dreams were in danger. What college fund? Where is the financial aid office? Who is FAFSA and do I even know her? They said my parents, who were struggling to pay their own bills, made too much money to help me with financial aid. So I became one of the 45 million people who collectively owe more than $1.6 trillion in student debt. I had to ask my aunt, my grandmother, and even my godparents to co-sign my student loans. But I figured I'd just pay it all back when I became a big time lawyer. And then I got that bill. I remember the sheer horror I felt when I saw the six figure balance on my loans. When I was ready to buy my first home right before my 30th birthday, those student loans said, hold up, have you seen your credit report? 
I'm telling you, if I ever see Sally Mae or her brothers, Navy it and Nail Net, on sight. <laughs> Look, my student debt story is, is just a tiny sliver of a national crisis that impacts many Americans, regardless of party affiliation, race, gender identity, or religion. But as the saying goes, when America catches a cold, black folks get pneumonia. White borrowers owe 65% of their original student loan debt a dozen years after they graduate, which is an astonishing amount, but 12 years after we graduate, black student loan borrowers owe more than 113% of our original student loan debt. And the problem is not restricted to young people. The number of elders who had their Social Security retirement checks garnished for student loans has grown by 540% since 2002. So what is the real price of opportunity? Well, thankfully, I was able to graduate from Seattle University School of Law and became a lawyer. Next month, I'll turn 40 years old. And as I stand here before you all today, my student loan balance is still a whopping $60,514. My story is a tale of financial illiteracy, forbearance, and a failure to plan. But it isn't unique. For millions of people, the only path to the American dream is to scale an unclimbable mountain of debt. Unless, of course, one of y'all can find that money tree. From the Howard Theater in Washington, D.C., you are watching Young, Gifted, and Broke, Our Student Loan Crisis, a BET News special. Here again, your host, Angela Rye. Thanks everyone for being here and everyone at home watching. We're here with an audience filled with current students and recent graduates to address a crisis impacting so many in our community. It's the crushing burden of student debt. Tonight we'll be seeking solutions from influential members of Congress, including Ilhan Omar, Johanna Hayes, and Bobby Scott. We'll also be joined by leaders in higher education, We'll hear from actor and activist Jesse Williams, and most importantly, we'll be having a direct dialogue with our many students and recent graduates in the audience. But I wanna start first, not with a show of hands, but with a show of numbers. We gave our audience cards to hold up, and I just wanna see from you all, how much do each of you owe in student loans? Hold those cards up high so our audience at home can see this. Wow. So we know these numbers are crazy, but what we also know is this is not surprising. And so at this point, I know we have two students here who have numbers that they didn't hold up, but you all have an astonishing amount of student loan debt. So first, actually with you, I want to start with you and just hear about your story um, and tell us your name and how much you owe. Hi, my name is Richelle Presume. I just graduated from George Washington University, and I now have $50,000 in student debt. Um, everyone I know is bogged down with student loans, and something that we ask ourselves all the time is how this student debt is going to affect whether or not we can afford certain life milestones, like buying a home, or even when choosing a partner, you know, we might have to ask ourselves, could we afford to get married, let alone have kids? Absolutely. Absolutely. And Blake, you also have a story. How much do you owe in student loan debt? So hello, Angela. My name is Blake. Um, I'm a recent graduate of North Carolina State University. I graduated in May, and now I am pursuing my master's in public policy, concentrating in campaigns and elections. Um, and with that, I owe $40,000 mm -hmm. in student debt. And basically, I'm an independent college student, so all of these loans and things are on me to pay back myself. And by independent, you mean your parents are not at all responsible? No, so I have to pay everything on my own. And so recently after school, I took a job in D.C., working here full time. So living in a super expensive city and having to pay back all these loans myself, I guess I just want to know, like, do you have any like tips for financial stability and still pursuing my, my education? Well, we hope to get to some of these answers tonight and so many more. Of course, this crisis doesn't just impact current students and recent grads. Student loan debt follows folks long after they've graduated. Folks like Jasmine McDuffie, a nurse who still hasn't made a dent in her loan payments nine years after graduating. Let's take a look. I've always done what I was supposed to do, follow the rules, go to school, get the job, so you can have a nice life. Okay, and we're off. Yeah. You can't drive. You can't drive, right. I went to one of the best colleges on earth, Spelman College, and unfortunately accumulated a lot of debt while there. 
My parents made too much money for government loans. So we were directed to the private loan sector. It has literally been a nightmare. I owe them $176,287.73. I have never shared that number with anyone because it is embarrassing. In nine years, I've not missed a payment. I have variable interest private loans uh, through Sally Mae. I work two full-time nursing jobs. Um, I'm a labor and delivery nurse at two separate hospitals. I'm just work home. Parker, Parker work home. When I got married, there was really no verbal arrangement. This is my debt and I was gonna pay it. That particular bill added a lot of financial stress to our marriage. I am not currently married anymore. I am making it happen and I am doing it by myself financially. I have been a teacher and I'm currently a nurse. Both of those areas of work afford people who've worked for X amount of years loan forgiveness. I am not able to receive that because I have private loans. It is the exact same loan company that other people are getting their loans forgiven through because of the word private. They're untouchable. You can't consolidate them. You can't send in income-based repayment uh, documentation. I will be 63 when my last payment is made. I went to school for, what, to pay it back for the rest of my life? I can't get out of it. I don't know where to go for help. It is disheartening to know that the number is definitely gonna go up in December because I will then be out of interest only payments. $1,800 a month is more than my current mortgage. If you're not in a place to get the full rides, the government funding, you are in a place to set yourself up for a trap. That burden, that stress, that emotion is real. I want to turn now to two people joining us who also know the issue of student debt all too well. Congresswoman Ilhan Omar is a Democratic congressman from Minnesota. Since arriving on Capitol Hill, she has focused on finding solutions to the student debt crisis. Congresswoman Omar, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. And also joining us is Michael Arsenault, a New York Times bestselling author and Howard University alum. Michael's next book addresses his own student debt. It's titled, I Don't Want to Die Poor, and no. neither do I, no, I Michael. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Thank Michael. Thank you for having me. Um, so I want to start with you, Congresswoman Omar. Um, you have said, like I said in my open, that you're one of 43 million with student debt in this country. Please talk to us a little bit about your personal story. Yeah, I'm one of 45 million. 45 million. 45 million. Um, and you know, it's it's been part of my journey and one of the reasons that drove me to run for office. I also have a daughter. Not only do I have student debt, but I have a daughter that's going to college in two years. Um, and so the the realness of this this burden um, that we all feel shackled with has been real for me. I'm one of the people who are unable to purchase the home that they wanted to. I'm one of the people that are putting off, right, the, the dream to own that business, to create the kind of investment they want in the future that they want to have. Um, and this idea that we uh, are supposed to get an education to jumpstart a life um, and have a, a pathway to success um, has not been one that um, has been guaranteed to, to most of us. Uh, it comes with lots of stress. Uh, and so for, for my family, for my husband, um, it's, it's been a real challenge to look at how much we're bringing in before getting to Congress mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and to see right, the amount of money that we have to write um, to pay off our student loan debt every single month. Yeah, and Michael, this is a story that you can relate to. You also have talked about um, the ways in which your family um, were enlisted in your higher education process. I take responsibility for my decision to fund my education in the way that I chose to do it. My mom told me that you could go to college, but I didn't know anything about the cost. I didn't realize maybe I needed to limit my dreams in some ways. I, well, I didn't think I needed to limit my dream. And one day at, um, at a, um, my high school, there was a recruiter. He looked like um, 
I, I don't know, Chris Brown's like older brother in that <laughs> same genre of Bay. And so that, Not you know, a genre, he, he, I might have been in denial, but I wasn't I was tempted to talk to him. And honestly, he he asked me specific questions. I was I've always been very specific about what I wanted to do with my life. Mm -hmm. He heard me and through like a 30 minute conversation completely changed my perspective about what I could do. I wish only a year before I had met him because I really went after scholarships. I had several, almost 20 outside scholarships. I worked nonstop. My, my family, we did everything we could, but we went through the private loan system. I didn't know anything about it. Um, that's my fault. People talk about financial literacy, but they also prey on people like yeah. me. Uh, yeah. That's an important piece, I think, because a lot of people think we made bad choices. Mm -hmm. And it's not about the bad choices we made. It's the system that's stacked up against right. you, right? When you're an immigrant, when right. you're the first to go to college in your family, when you're looking at, you know, having to pay your rent and all of these other things and the only options you have is to take up more loans. When you think going to a private college right. gives you um, an, a, a bigger opportunity and a better life, um, all, all of that is the enticement that, that creates and, a system that preys on you. And Michael, you had your mom co-sign yes, loans for you, right? Yes. Um, there's an essay I, um, that I wrote for the New York Times, which is the basis of the book. Um, it was interesting, the original digital title kind of alludes to the fact that I would, I, have cons I would never kill myself because my mom would still be on the hook for my loans. What I write about, um, what, I've written, what I write about in the book and what I've written about already and what I've talked about with many people who will listen is that I am very keenly aware of how that debt affects you just beyond just not just, it's one thing is to not get a house and might delay marrying and dating. It impacts you on just a spiritual level. Yeah. You have to get up every single day and sometimes wrestle with the fact that were you selfish for daring to think that you can dream the way you saw black people wow. on TV or like some white folks? Wow. Were you selfish um, to think that, because at one point mom, my mom had some words for my choice to want to go to one of these schools, but you know what, she believed in me mm -hmm. and she did it anyway. And I carried the guilt with me that I attached her name to that. Mm -hmm. I honestly didn't want to be like another man to let her down. Like it's impacted wow. me on a real level. Can't afford therapy yet because I got to get these loans off, but we almost there. <laughs> but, uh, but no, really. We're gonna I, find you some low cost therapy you know, since we I've been Googling that. around, yes. Uh, okay. But no, it's just, I know how could that impact you just on a day-to-day -day level. Yes. And so many of these narratives about millennials, about we're ruining the economy, buying uh, avocado toast, they're talking about why we're not having children. Like, that's so banal. And no one wants, none of these people want to talk about how the fact that you set us up for this mm -hmm. in so many different ways. Like, this is a generational thing. It, just, it blows my mind. So I just have really tried to, on a personal level, make real peace with my choice. It's really hard for people to tell you to shake things off um, I don't always want to be a sad Mary J. Blige album, but sometimes that's just where I'm at. <laughs> You're not. But You're no, not. really, like, I'm yeah. paying over $1,000 a month, mm -hmm. and I've been doing that for well over a decade. Mm -hmm. And maybe I should not have chose to be a writer, but to be honest, I mean, do you know what the median income is? I work hard so I exceed that. I'm still broke because I'm set up for this. Mm -hmm. And I think about what my life could be if I just even... With private loans, I don't even negotiate with you. Yeah. It's like the government loans will at least let that interest accrue and that's on you, but the private people are like, you better give me this money or I'm gonna ruin your life. Well, I already had, I told her about it at the beginning, as you heard, and unfortunately, we are out of time for this block, but Michael, I thank you so much for being here to share your story. We need to take a quick break. Much more to come, stay with us. Coming up, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar outlines her plan to eliminate student debt. Plus, star Jesse Williams and a major policy announcement revealed on our show. Stay with us. Welcome back to our BET News special, Young, Gifted, and Broke, our student loan crisis. Here again, your host, Angela Rye. Knowledge is power, and tonight we are talking about how student debt is threatening the financial health of an entire generation of black students and their families. The investment in higher learning is valuable, but is it too costly? Still with us is Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, and I want to welcome journalist Danielle Douglas Gabriel, who covers student debt for the Washington Post. Danielle, I want to start with you for a quick explainer in case anybody at home missed it. Can you talk to us a little bit about why the cost of college education is so high and how we got here? There are a couple of factors at play. There's been a lot of state disinvestment in public higher education the last few decades. And when you lower the amount of money you're appropriating to public colleges, well, then they have to raise tuition, or at least they say they have to raise tuition in order to offset that money. 
We're also seeing a lot of those schools trying to attract out-of-state students or, in some cases, just trying to attract students who can pay full freight. So they start building facilities that often are supposedly supposed to attract these students, but that comes at a cost, and sometimes that premium is paid by the students. But it is far more expensive to really deal with some of the educational needs of some of the student population that's come into our schools, dealing with their learning disabilities, having people on staff who know how to handle that to make sure that they have the resources to graduate. But the reality is, oftentimes, a lot of students of color are ending up at schools that don't have the resources to serve them entirely, and so they don't complete. Wow. And Congresswoman Omar, you have um, introduced... All right. So here's a, another great workout. Definitely had to pace myself. Uh, I was lightheaded, a little lightheaded before recording. So I was pretty surprised I was able to hold on to the workout. Straight ahead to the imperfection the planks, the side planks, instead of doing 45 seconds, I end up doing 30 seconds. 30 of uh, 30 sec um, side plank, 30 seconds, two reps, or two sets, I should say, two sets, two sets of 30 second planks on the side. Uh, hopefully, my side planks could get a little bit more stronger that I could do two sets of 45 seconds. All right. Uh, and on, in all honesty, I think what we just did today was just increase the workout. So it wasn't really nothing new. Um, I want to take the time. I want to take the time to send condolences to my good friend. Uh, my good friend brother passed away, so I just want to send condol condolences to that person. Um, and uh, just give it a due respect in this season. Overall, I think uh, everyone in, in today's world is doing the best they can, really. Uh, whatever that means, if it's finding peace in nature, finding peace at the beach, finding peace in vacation, finding peace in studying for uh, studying in school for one year, two years, four years, masters, you know, finding that peace really. Um, I know for me, it's coming to an understanding today's life is really boiling down to what's really important. It's so much variety of options to pick. Um, the top on my list is definitely just being sure as a man I'm making great choices to provide, stay healthy, uh, bills being paid, so the economics, the finances, being financial literate in this time. So if there is a recession, uh, I'm not feeling the burden of a recession. Uh, but that's here nor there right now. Everything is going pretty well. And uh, we're still pushing in the fast fasting on the days that I, the other days, the rest, the restful days, I was able to fit in some, fit some push-ups and some curls with a dumbbell. Yeah, and some push-ups really. And yeah, shoulder shrugs. Ah, yeah, get the shoulders going. So. Anybody that's been following me, I really don't like to ramble if I don't have like that clear version, clear vision of what I want to say. Uh, normally things just come up in the due season, I speak on it. So with that being said, I hope you guys are remaining peaceful in your season and exercising. Hopefully the videos that I'm sharing to you guys are very helpful. And with that being said, you guys take care.